Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to today's reflection on Saturday, the 13th week in Ordinary Time. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Amos. It is the Lord who speaks. That day I will re-erect the tottering hut of David, make good the gaps in it, restore its ruins, and rebuild it as it was in the days of old, so that they can conquer the remnant of Edom and all the nations that belonged to me. It is the Lord who speaks, and He will carry this out. The days are coming now. It is the Lord who speaks. When harvests will follow directly after ploughing, the treading of grapes soon after sowing, when the mountains will run with new wine, and the hills all flow with it. I mean to restore the fortunes of my people Israel. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them, plant vineyards and drink their wine, dig gardens and eat their produce. I will plant them in their own country, never to be rooted up again out of the land I have given them, says the Lord your God. The Word of the Lord the Lord speaks peace to His people. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. Peace for His people and His friends, and those who turn to Him in their hearts. The Lord speaks peace to His people. Mercy and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. The Lord speaks peace to His people. The Lord will make us prosper, and our earth shall yield its fruit. Justice shall march before Him, and peace shall follow His steps. The Lord speaks peace to His people. Alleluia! Alleluia! Let your face shine on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John's disciples came to him and said, Why is it that we and the Pharisees fast, but the disciples do not? Jesus replied, Surely the bridegroom's attendants would never think of mourning as long as the bridegroom is still with them. But the time will come for the bridegroom to be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunken cloth onto an old cloak, because the patch pulls away from the cloak and the tear gets worse. Nor do people put new wine into old wineskins. If they do, the skins burst, the wine runs out, and the skins are lost. No, they put new wine into fresh skins, and both are preserved. The Gospel of the Lord Brothers and sisters in Christ, do you fast? And if the answer is yes, why? In many religious traditions, fasting is considered an act 
of purification, a way, a practice whereby we can detach from our unhealthy attachments to things, to pleasures, to sin, in order for us to attach ourselves to a greater good, to for other practice of virtue, it could be to charity, and especially, of course, to God ultimately. That is the true meaning of fasting. However, we have many different people with many different ideas. Understood wrongly, fasting can be a way of, maybe a person considers it a way of working out his own salvation. Perhaps the person may say, Hey God, I've done so much. I've fasted for how many days? I've sacrificed this and that. As if the person then merits heaven, merits a reward. We all know that salvation and heaven comes as grace, as a free gift from God because He loves us. And so, if we have this idea that fasting is a way of punishing ourselves, then we are losing out on the real meaning, the beautiful meaning of this practice. What is your disposition, my brothers and sisters, towards fasting? In the Gospel, we see that Jesus certainly had the right disposition. He sees fasting merely as a tool, a tool for him and his disciples to draw closer to him. And therefore, you see that his disciples do not fast, simply because he, as God, is already with them. They are experiencing the fullness, the joy, the abundance of God in his very presence, something described by the prophet Amos in the first reading, where God is a God of abundance, a God who provides, a God who heals. And within us, when we are close to God, we are filled to the brim with his peace and with his presence. Fasting allows us to be free to say yes to God because we are able to say no to ourselves and to our appetites. And therefore, it is a wonderful practice and it's a time-honored tradition. And like everything in life, we know that practice makes perfect. The more we are able to say no to our immediate desires, the more we are free to say yes to God. And therefore, I pray, brothers and sisters, that we may put on a new mind when it comes to fasting. Also, as the Gospel says, to put new wine into fresh skins, to understand uh, Jesus in a whole different light. And therefore, I pray that as we read this wonderful reading today, we are filled with the eagerness to unite our hearts to God and to say yes to Him by slowly detaching ourselves from our attachments. May the Lord give you His peace. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. May this divine word we have received fill us with life, O oh Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters.